you all feel like you're one family, even though you're from all over the territory. So you've got to yeah, you we're bring all the territory together in a way, don't you? We're from about, I think Catherine downwards, they sent everybody up to the salt water. Okay. Okay, and all the salt water kids had to go to the desert. Yeah. And that was so you couldn't retrace your family yeah. steps. Yeah. That was deliberately done. Sure. And uh, I thought I never had a mother and father because my birth certificate said so. Yeah. But somehow they found me in the, in the 80s. And I was sort of dumbfounded. It was on paper. I didn't have any. Mm -hmm. So we started looking a bit further and then we found more relics. Uh, a couple of mines still around, I need to go and see them. We lost a lot by being taken away. I mean, we, we gained some education. I think we could have got more. Did you? You left school at 12? They told me I had to leave. Yeah, so I, you, I you no were given no, no formal schooling after, tw after the age of 12? Nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. I went to work and that was it. Yeah. And I'm still working today. About 100 goats here, you know. And I suppose there would have been 60, 70 nannies there. Yeah. We had to milk them okay. in the morning. At that age. So right from the beginning, yeah. Hey, and then as you got a bit older, they just put you onto the dairy cows. So you was working well before you went to work. Yeah. And what we did out there was we did half a day school and half a day mining goats. Okay. So the three of us boys would go out in the morning and by lunchtime we'd come near the school, this, this school you saw here somewhere, there's two buildings. Yeah. We'd bring the goats fairly close. Two or three of the kids from there, would, it's only boys, yeah. would race home, gobble their food up, get into their, their play clothes, come back, take the goats of us, and we're going to run home. This is all in that one hour, thank you. We're going to run home, have a quick bogey, gobble up our food and be at school. <laughs> this, is, this is true. Do you remember speaking Walbury when you went to Kroger? Yep, yep, yep. I was speaking Walbury when I went to Kroger because the, the boys would listen to me. Huh. And... They were hearing language uh, they didn't hear before. Okay. Because the boys that I was friends with, you know, came from LC and mm. Borrowville and places like that. But the boys that was there had forgotten their language. Okay. And I don't know how much they learned when they, as a child, but when I went there, I could still speak it. I was going out on the on the boat. I was speaking to the the uh, Aboriginal crew. Mm. I was speaking with them in my language. Okay. And I thought they understood me. Yeah, and of course they didn't. You know, they'd laugh on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, and when I got out there, I was still talking the language, yeah, and then I eventually forgot it because I was too busy trying to learn what the other boys were saying. Of course, yeah. yeah so I lost it all together. Yeah, of course. And then after a period of time, I didn't even... No, I came from the desert. I honestly thought I came from the island. Sure. Because we went out so young. Mm. And I didn't know about the desert until I came in and moved across from the light aircraft hangar to the uh, Forestry Commission, which was mm. in 66, 65, 66. And I started work with them. And while I was there, they got a, a doze operator to come out, you know, and get on mm. one of our new dozers. Mm. And when I went to meet him, and they said, meet uh, Willie Lane, and I went to meet him, and he said, I know you. And I sort of looked at him. He said, you're from Phillip Creek. And it was then that I started thinking about everything. Mm. Mm. And then it just gradually came back to me slowly. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it was through Willie Lane, because he, he told me, because he's older than me by about three or four years, and he mm -hmm. told me about Phillip Creek. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I ran into Jimmy Anderson along the way, and he was on the, they were both on the truck when I jumped off and ran away. Okay. Yeah, so they actually said, well, you was the one that got to jump off the truck and ran away. The so. one that got away. Yeah, yeah the one that got away, like a fish. Yes. <laughs> Did you, yeah. did you meet up with your parents, see your parents in Little Off? Now what happened was that when I was at 
the Forest Commission in Burma, uh, an Aboriginal from uh, Lodge Manu was there working, well, there's heaps of them there, mm. but he was there and his name was Victor Simon, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that he knew me. I don't know where from, but he knew me and he was married to my sister. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. He kept that quiet there. Yeah. I left. Nothing was said about that. And uh, headed off down to the, the West Australian border for a little while, then I shot back through to the Gulf area and I worked there, travelling around for years and years. And, and uh, a friend of mine, I call you, from the island, he used to go out to the larger minor and, and uh, back in the mid-70s he told me, he said, you got family out there. This was mm. in 76, 77. He said, they've been looking for you. But I kept thinking about my birth certificate, mm. mother unknown, mm. or you know, mother deceased, father unknown. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I suppose people might want to claim you, I don't know. Anyway, I continued working on travelling around. And every now and again I'd run into Corda and, and mm. his wife and they'd say, you, you better go out there and see them. I said, oh yeah, well, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get round to it, you know, but mm. I sort of never got round to it. Anyway, I ended up at Elsie Station doing contract work there in the mid-80s and uh, never gave it a second thought. I was just working there one day and this, this, this Toyota Land Cruiser pulled up. This was in 87. And uh, when I looked for Victor Simon, hopped out. And uh, he said, I've got someone here you might want to meet. Mm. Oh, yeah, and he had my sister. And he said, Your mother's here. Come on. I was just blown away. Because mm. my paperwork said she was deceased. Mm. So I, uh, I met her. Mm -hmm. Gave her a bit of a hug and all that. But straight away, in the back of my head, it's, it's, it was that, how can anybody remember me now in 87, mm. from the mid-40s, you know? But it's a long time when I was taken away, so small. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I accepted it. And, uh, I asked her later on, when I was born, I really wanted to know that. Mm. And she didn't even hesitate, she just said 1943. I thought, that's close enough. Mm. That, that'll do me. Mm. Yeah, so it was that date that actually got me convinced, you. convinced that she was my yeah. mother. Okay. Prior to that, I just sort of, you had to have doubts because. If, mm. you were, if you were taken away from the mid 40s, mm -hmm. and you, she turned up in the mid 80s, I think mean, it's 40 years had gone by there. Mm -hmm. But little did I know that they were trying to look for me, you know, here and there. But I was too always far. over the border, too far away. Yeah. Too far away, and the transport wasn't too flashy in those days. Sure. You overloaded. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So how how long have you been working here at Ranger? Two years. Just two years? Two years, yeah. You haven't yeah. worked there before? No, first I'm back here at Ranger and uh, I I was working for myself before I came here. I, I had a contract in town there for about four or five years doing commercial cleaning and stuff. I've been working here at Ranger for two years. Uh, on my third year now. Uh, hopefully I can see that out. And maybe longer. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty good out here. You know. Another reason why I wanted to come out here too is that it's closer to Croker. If I need to go across fishing or okay. hunting in them, I just zip across, it's just there. Mm -hmm. And if I want something from Darwin, it's just there, so I'm in the middle. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get anything better. And Croker's where I grew up. You grew up on your stories, are you? Yeah? All my stories that. Actually, it's all at Croker, and for me to tell my kids any stories other than being taken away and taken away, all, all my uh, stories that the kids should be learning and 
hunting and fishing and whatever the mm -hmm. whole lot that goes with it is from that island. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all about the island, all over the island. So although this this country here is not um, traditionally not your country, but you you still feel pretty attached to this country here in Kakadu, or is it oh, yeah. everything's focused on Kakadu? Yeah, well, now I call my country Top End. Okay. Yeah, and this is right in it.